welcome back to my channel. I'm Grace of Goodness Gracious and today we're building an arbor. Last week you would have seen us tear down the old greenhouse. If you haven't seen that, go check it out and then come back because today I'm building the arch. It's a temporary arch. Next year we're gonna do like a, a really nice, more permanent one. But this is kind of like a temporary solution just so my beans have something to climb up and yeah. Come join me in the garden. Oh. Right now is the perfect time of day to be working in this area because there's about an hour and a half that this giant tree shades uh, the sun, shades the sun, provides shade by covering the sun. What am I trying to say? There's shade here for like an hour and a half and I'm gonna take advantage of it so that I don't get too hot and also I don't get tan lines. start off by measuring how far apart the trellises should be. Taking into consideration that the wiring I got is three feet, so it is going to have to overlap a little bit in the middle, but that's okay. I found the easiest course of action was to measure how long of a strip of chicken wire I would need and cut it beforehand, before trying to attach it. Okay, moving on, we'll get back to the trellis later. For now, we're gonna work on the garden bed. So this was an old door from an old wood box that was in our backyard that we tore down and then I used that wood door as the floor inside the old greenhouse and now it's gonna be transformed into a garden bed. This door has had quite a life. Make sure you're always aware of where the cord is. Don't be like my dad and saw through the cord. It's both extremely dangerous and you know you're gonna ruin a perfectly good skill saw. It's a good rule of thumb or toes to not wear flip-flops when you're using power tools. Now, had I done a little more measuring as per usual or really thought things through, I wouldn't have cut these all apart. And you'll see why coming up. Thank you. 
I decided to make this garden bed 5 feet by 1 feet. 1 feet? 1 foot. 5 by 1. And I didn't feel like going and finding a pencil, so I just used a screw to engrave in the wood where to cut it. And then I'm just going to use the piece of wood that I just cut off and flip it upside down on the next piece and mark out where to cut the next piece. I wasn't having the best luck trying to line everything up in the dirt, so I finally picked everything up and headed over to the patio area, which made a lot more sense. I was having a heck of a time trying to attach this last piece of wood. I couldn't for the life of me figure out why it wasn't square. There's the problem. What? I think I just, just changed my mind halfway through. Sometimes you just have one of those days. So I took the one wall off and reattached it and everything made a lot more sense after that. And as I had mentioned, had I thought it through, I wouldn't have cut all the pieces of wood apart from each other because after building the little box and putting it in the ground, I realized how wimpy it looked, being only six inches tall. So I rummaged through our wood burning pile and found a few scraps to use to attach a second layer of walls all the way around the existing garden bed. And it made it look a lot more robust and a lot more um, less wimpy. hit the light. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, I'm back. It's day two. We've got blue nails and curly bangs. And I am the most 80s I've ever been in my life right now. So I got some one by six by eight fence boards or deck boards. I can never remember. I'll insert it here. And these are what I'm going to use to rip down to make the trellis. Now, the thing is with lumber in general, unless you get a rough cut, if it's a one by six, it's actually a one by 
five and a half. It's not even five and a half. It's like five. It's actually like five and three eighths of an inch. When you rip it, you want to account for about an eighth of an inch per rip. So I'm cutting this into four equal sections, which means there will be three rips that are an eighth of an inch each, which is three eighths of an inch. Then you're left with about five inches to work with. So five divided by four is one and a quarter, right? Yes, one and a quarter. So I'm gonna set the table saw to one and a quarter. Ooh, this table saw, it's so rigid, except that it's not a rigid. That would be nice. I like this table saw, I can't complain. It's pretty awesome. Just very stiff. Now I need to find an outlet. You can't really tell, but the garage isn't put together yet by any means. Kevin just kind of finagled everything enough that I could use the table saw today, so nothing is plugged in, and I'm not even sure where any of the extension cords are. After I ripped everything down to an inch and a half, I'm moving over to the radial arm saw to cut the cross pieces to 22 inches. Using this tool is kind of overkill for these little inch and a half strips of wood, but the chop saw isn't set up yet, so this is what I've got to work with. So excited for the garage to not be in ruins anymore. I found the easiest way to space out the cross pieces evenly was to do the top and the bottom piece first and then measure the space in between that and divide it by three so that I can evenly space out the remaining two strips. After having put it all together, I realized that there wasn't nearly enough cross pieces. So I went and found some more scrapped wood, ripped it down to an inch and a half, and then cut it down to 22 inches. I tape 
scissors over there. I can't, I can't walk through the garage anymore. <sighs> Okay, we've had another case of I only measured once. I only measured once. In fact, I actually didn't measure at all. I bought eight foot boards, assuming that the existing trellises were eight feet tall. I haven't actually made them. I'm just trying to recreate them. But they're actually only six feet tall. And they don't have to line up perfectly, but like two feet is a big difference. So, so I measured from the very top of the existing trellis down to the ground, and it was 80 inches. So 80 inches is like roughly just above this piece here. So I'm just gonna cut the top off. Round two. The second trellis went a lot faster because I was able to just measure the space in between each cross piece on the one I had just built behind me. Okay, so. Now that those are all put together, we're gonna go outside and attach them to the garden bed and then we can attach them with the, uh, with the chicken wire. No. Attaching the two trellises with the chicken wire was definitely a buddy build, so thank goodness Kevin was able to help me out. He held it up over my head so that I could staple it just in a few spots to get it secured where I wanted it, and then I went back and stapled it at about every other cross piece. Once I started attaching them near the top, I noticed that the chicken wire was pulling the two pieces of trellis together. So I just grabbed a few scraps to make a brace to just keep them separated so that it would remain square. Relatively square. Relative to like, I don't know, a circle, I guess. Well, I glued that through the back together. Okay. I glued my fingers together in the meantime. Okay. That crazy glue sure is crazy.
Well, there you have it guys, our DIY, temporary, makeshift, budget-friendly garden arch trellis for the beans and the cucumbers. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing because there's a lot to come. Alright, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye!